G'day everyone, I'm Smokescreen and welcome back to another video and finally we are back Really really sorry about the lengthy break uh, between now and the last video There's been a bit going on. I've had a family member sick. I've been sick work's been crap and Yeah, bit bit all over the place, but we're finally back. I'm recovered from the sickness I had and my voice is back to my somewhat to somewhat acceptable commentary level. I'm still a little bit nasally and mucusy from my cold, but I think it's just about good enough to get itself into the video here. So here we go with the combination that I've been sitting on for a long, long time in terms of making this video. Uh, here we go with the FIA Nations Cup round from be about a month ago now. <laughs> Uh, Tsukuba circuit in N300 and here we go out for qualifying here also I have picked up recently the amount of times I say here we go in my commentary is astronomical so I guess drinking game for here we go something I've got to try and iron out because it sounds really stupid me repeating the same thing every five seconds but here we go there we go I just did it again Let's get into the qualifying session now. So, N300 at Tsukuba Circuit. So you could use any N300 car. You could even use other cars that aren't N300, provided that they are either tune-upable or tune-downable uh, in order to meet the N300 category. But there was only really... There was one meta car in, in qualifying time trial. But then, in the race, it's a little bit of a different story. But we've gone for the Toyota SFR, the little concept car... Um, don't really know what else to say. I don't think it's a real car. It was like a concept car made ages ago by Toyota and it happens to be the meta car for qualifying. But once we get into the race, we will see that it's not as clear cut as, you know, this is the best car. But we continue the qualifying run and we can see there we're over a tenth down as we go past the first sector split of our second lap. So we're going to bin that off and go out for another qualifying run. There's plenty of time here. Uh, still a five minute session but because the lap is only about a minute or so uh, therefore the out lap is also just over a minute. So we have plenty of time to do a couple of qualifying runs but here we go across the line uh, and I've said it again so be sure to take another shot. But we're up behind uh, Emery, who is in the BMW M3, I think it is. And that is another car that is all right here. But we're just going to get this corner right. We get that much better than our qualifying run previously. You can see we're about half a tenth up at this point, heading down the back straight. A little bit of a toe off the back of codes. Heading through the final corner. It's still not an improvement. Half a tenth down. But we've now got the good slipstream off the back of codes, who's a very quick driver. Easily can put his car on pole position in top split so the fact that we've got his slipstream is very good heading up the second uh, uh, second straight bit uh, we're a little bit down at that first sector split as we go through this right hander we get that much better and I think we are gonna head up towards the second to last corner you can see we're marginally up at this point we're gonna fast forward all the way to the end so that was that sector split and then coming through the final corner across the line Half a tenth down. It's really disappointing. I could manage in practice like a 103.1, 103.0 uh, sort of realm. I could maybe even just about dip into the 102s, but I wasn't able to do it this time. So we're going to start in ninth. And as you can see ahead, there's a couple of M4s up ahead, and we'll discuss what that means for the race. But as for now, let's just enjoy the Nations Cup introduction. Lovely, as always, we meet ourselves on the grid and they've given us a standing start with false start check here for this combination. <laughs> 
Anyway, let's move on. So we meet ourselves at the grid finally, and you can see the beautiful view of our car there. But we've got a standing start, which uh, is good. I think it was the right choice for this combination, but that does mean the whole pack's going to be bunched up for turn one. One major issue with the Toyota SFR is the launch, and we'll see as the lights go out, get a nice launch there, but we actually forgot to turn traction control on, but we thankfully didn't lose out too much. But you can see the BMW M4s up ahead are making immediate inroads into the group of Toyota FS SFRs ahead. We've got Tazar up the inside and three M3s looking around the outside of a bunch of Toyota SFRs. But here we go, we equalise in ninth position finally as we're heading up through turn two and turn three into the braking zone for turn four. I think we bumped Tazar slightly, a little bit more bumps here and there but we have gotten through there relatively cleanly looking up the inside of Tazar as we go through turn five the sort of 90 degree right hand we've got a car on our left hand side trying to go up that gap that doesn't really exist uh, but he manages to uh, make that gap exist I guess and as we head into the second to last corner we've got Atom up ahead he's trying to muscle his way past the BMW M4 driven by John Teeter and I've now got the slipstream off the back of Atom off the back of that incident and I've just left Tazar uh, out to dry but as we head up into the final corner Tazar has just kept the car on the inside because I've now got the outside for the long right hander to finish up the lap I've got the longer distance and Tazar manages to grab that position off me, looking up the inside of turn one is Captain Muffin. That was the car going up the inside on the exit of that 90 degree right-hander. And he manages to get me for 10th. And we equalise in 10th as well. So, this race is pretty carnage I'm not going to lie. And this also uh, had a really interesting dynamic in terms of the cars you could choose. So, as I mentioned before, the Toyota SFR is the meta car in qualifying time trial with no other cars on track this is the car you wanted it has a lot it has a good amount of downforce actually for an n300 car it's got a big rear diffuser big rear wing front splitter if i recall correctly so a lot of downforce there it's really good in the corners but it's really bad on the straight so this is where the other cars begin to come into the picture so have a look behind actually you can see gtp legend is in the toyota supra i think the supra or the m4 were the alternate uh, alternate choices and the thing is the the quirk there but we'll just come back to that actually is we're following captain muffin in the inside we miss our breaking point because we're too busy focused on captain muffin i slam into the side of tazar and i've just let the toyota supra through thanks to that i'm that was really, really stupid of me, and I've kind of ruined Tazar's race too, because uh, we're finally getting to the point I was making before. The Toyota Supra has made his way through, and because he's done that, he can actually gain on the straight. So the Toyota Supra and the BMW M3, they are much, uh, much better in a straight line. They're not as good in the corners, but they're much better down the straights, like... When I say much better, I mean a lot better. Like, to the point where they can completely drive away from you, completely gap you on this very short back straight here at Tsukuba, which is only about 440 metres. So, in the course of the 440 metres, the Super and the M4 completely drive away. And they drive away so much so that once we get to the corners, there's not enough of the track where the Toyota is strong enough in order to get that back up. And because of the other cars having that straight line power it kind of eliminates any moves that you can do especially as we're already at Sakuba, which is a notoriously difficult track to overtake by the fact that we've now got these straight line power cars in the mix it's basically impossible to overtake them because where do you get your overtakes done you get them done in the corners where are the corners at the end of the straights if you've got a whole straight and you've been gapped by this power car that may be slightly slower than you that's that's it you're stuck behind them for the duration of the race and that is why I think in hindsight a car like the Toyota uh, Supra or the BMW M3 might have actually been better choices for this race because if you play your cards right, if you can just about get ahead of a Toyota SFR as you can see, uh, here we go, here's the example uh, here as the Toyota Supra makes his way clean past Tazar, there's absolutely nothing uh, he can do about that, it's essentially 
you've just got to try and be as far ahead of him as possible so he doesn't get too much of a gap on you once he does go past. They follow each other to the inside for turn one and they both meet the breaking point this time. So not copying my tactics there, which has unfortunately kind of ruined Tazar's race by no fault of his own. It's ruined my race too, but it was my fault in the end. So I guess that bit's deserved. It was not deserved for Tazar because you can see, this is exactly what I'm talking about. We're held up in the corners. You can see how slow we're going through the corners because the Toyota Supra does not have the downforce that this SFR has. And we're just gonna make a slight skip. It was status quo all the way until this portion of the race, uh, lap seven, as we're heading up into the final corner. Tazar goes for the send down the inside and that is pretty uh, that was a very good attempt there, and we get re-overtaken at the same corner by FIA punter OK. Um, that is GT Sport penalty. He's changed his uh, PSN ID. But uh, Tazar went for the move at the final corner. FIA punter OK went for the move on me, and I now find myself down in 12th. So this is really, uh, really unfortunate in terms of my race here, because this is going nowhere fast. There's no strategy to worry about either, so it's literally a straight out sprint race. Fuel is not an issue, tyre wear is not an issue whatsoever. You can see we're over halfway into the race and there might be like one click of red tyre wear on the four tyres. Uh, so really, no issue at all. You can see at this point I've got Tazar, FIA Punts, myself and FA Hayden all stuck in a train behind the uh, Toyota Supra. So because that Supra is running slower than us, we're all catching up to the back of him, but the only reason he's staying ahead is because he can gap down the straight. So this is a really frustrating race, if I'm going to be completely honest. I know it's kind of my fault that we're all in this, but we continue on all the same. Heading up towards the final corner, the Super has gapped gapped us all again. I try to go down the inside of FIA punts, but that doesn't quite come off. Uh, GTP Legend is very sideways on the exit of the final corner, and we are now... Uh, running down the back straight, uh, F.A. Hayden firmly behind me, F.I.A. Punts get in gets in ahead of Tazar who waggles his steering wheel in frustration I assume uh, because we are just absolutely hemorrhaging time stuck behind the Toyota Supra. So uh, in addition as well, the, those power cars are much better off the, off the uh, off the line, so uh, you can quite easily overtake a couple of people straight up. F.A. Hayden goes in for the sort of dive bomb of the century. I flash my headlights a little bit at him. Not quite satisfied with that move, because that was uh, absolutely filled with contact. Uh, the Super goes very wide, and it gives F.I.A. Punts an opportunity to go up the inside. It gives him the outside for the following corner, but that spit, that small straight in between those two corners was enough for the Super to get back ahead, so this is really why I think the Super is probably the better race car, even though the Toyota SFR is the better qualifying car. The issue with choosing a power car like that, though, is you have to qualify it well. That's the most difficult part, is qualifying. If you can qualify up towards the front, you can probably hold a lot of people up. But as we're heading down the back straight for lap 10, bump drafting FA Hayden as we go up the inside of Tazar around to the final corner. Tazar's going to be looking for the cutback up the inside there. He runs into the back of me. He's not able to get that move done. But as we run into the back of Hayden, does he get the overlap into turn one? He doesn't quite get that overlap in order to go up the inside at turn one, but he's closing under braking, but sensibly backs out. And FIA punches through on the Supra. That's just about where you need to get the move done because if you can defend it down through turn two and turn three it gives you the inside for turn four and then it gives you an opportunity to gap the super as we head through the last few corners of the track so FIA punts has made his way through his next job is to make sure he can gap the super just enough through these next few corners uh, so much so that the super is not able to re-overtake uh, him down the back straight he's got one more corner to do so as GTB legend actually runs in very deep so uh, he's struggling with that super and that just lets FA Hayden through there he's trying to defend very aggressively but the super just about had the overlap as Hayden tried to move over so the super gets back ahead of Hayden we're now bumping to Zara down the back straight now got to make sure we don't punt him off at the final corner that would be very stupid of me uh, but we round through there and you can see FIA punts has broken uh, the Supra's wrath the the stronghold that the Supra had on on the SFR there has been broken so it is possible to do it's just very difficult because I've not only got to get to the front uh, because I've not only got to overtake the Supra I've got to get to the front of all these Toyotas fighting behind and 
you know, I've got to maintain a good rapport with all the drivers as I do, so I don't want to sort of shove anyone off the track to get an overtake done. So with that in mind, Tazar goes really wide, grazing the grass on the entry to turn five, and we're just going to grab his slipstream heading down this little bit of a straight, actually contains two corners, turn six and turn seven, but into turn eight, GTP Legend receives a nudge from F.A. Hayden, who's kind of had enough of being stuck behind the Supra, and this is a... I kind of identify with that sentiment, to be honest, because, you know, it's really... This race was really, really frustrating, and, you know, Tazar and I are doing our absolute best to try and get past. You can see Hayden has defended from the Supra through the uh, through the back straight, and I think that's going to mean that Hayden can sort of drive away. Tazar has four wheels on the grass. He's going to have dirt on his tyres, so I'm going to try and get up the inside at this uh, point in the race here. He tries to hang it around the outside. I've run into the back of the Supra, run into the back of him again, but he gets the power down on the exit and is not able to, uh, not, not able to fall victim to an overtake from me. We've only got, you know, two and a bit laps to go. Uh, and you can see F.A. Hayden is ahead of the Supra at this point. So the Supra probably struggling with tie wear a little bit. It is a very oversteery and wheel spinny machine, so maybe the tyre wear effects do hit the Supra more so than the Toyota SFR. You can see just about a sliver of red on the front left tyre of the Toyota SFR, so it's really not too much of a factor. Uh, but as we head down this straight for the third to last time, uh, GTP Legend, in addition to his straight line speed, now has the slipstream off the back of Hayden. Is it the straight? Just about short enough for Hayden to be able to defend it. He's still ahead at this point as we round through the final corner. We've got the power down nicely. We actually uh, almost get completely flat to the exit. We're uh, gaining actually on the super. He decides to defend. I would, probably would have sent it down the inside if I had the opportunity to do such, but I wasn't able to get close enough to the super. I almost hang it around the outside, and I actually do hang it around the outside, but the super gets the power down side by side through turn two. I probably could have sent it down the inside there, but I'm not quite brave enough as I bump into the back of the Supra. I try to get up the inside, but he's now got the inside for the following corner. So it's a very difficult dynamic here. He's just holding us all up. You can see carrying hardly any speed through there. And F.A. Hayden is just driving away. You can see what's that. Probably a second gap already heading into the final corner. GTP Legend a little bit wide. He leaves a car width on the apex. I try to get my car up the inside. A little bit of oversteer on the exit. And just escort him to the track edge as much as I possibly can. But it's to no avail. Look at that. He's driving away from me. There's literally nothing I can do. And it just really demonstrates the imbalance there is in these road car group N categories. As we head into the final quarter, my last opportunity to perhaps get this move done is into turn one. So I can try and gap him through the rest of the lap. Looking up the inside, trying to fill his mirrors. Switching left, switching right, switching to the inside. And I just about managed to run into the back of him. Concertina effect and Meta 7 gear makes his way past up the inside there. And he, well, running side by side up through turn two and into turn three. Break for turn four. I think there's a little bit of a bump there. And I've just escorted him wide, trying to get up the inside. And, you know, I have done that, but that was a little bit of a bump and run in hindsight. So he kind of returns the serve here and escorts me wide off the track and we just about managed to get through there side by side it's gotten a little bit messy look at that radar at this point what's that five cars Tazar sends it down the inside of about three players and manages to get the power down on the exit but I'm getting escorted off the track again by Meta 7 gear and there was another additional car on my outside he's got absolutely shafted and Iron Mask just completely takes advantage of all that uh, argy bargy going on there so a little bit you know, a little bit strong by Meta 7 gear, but I return the serve, going up the inside of the final corner. A bit of a strong move, but I think given uh, the number of incidents there was in that final lap, I think I was just about owed one. Also, it's the BMW M4 I've just seen. I think I've been saying M3. That's pretty embarrassing, isn't it? I'm not a BMW enthusiast. <laughs> that's my only... Uh, that's my only excuse for that. We come across the line in 14th. A really, really disappointing result. 144 points. This kind of combination, it's really down to qualifying. If you can qualify well, you can probably just keep your position because it's so difficult to overtake. So I knew I had to go again, and I was running out of time slots too. I think this was the second of three time slots we had, and this is the second one now. Back into top split, we're actually up rank six this time. So a lot of people that sort of 
you know, did their night's worth of racing in slot one and now not going again, and because there's hardly any uh, players in Oceania, there's not really any extra people to fill up fill up the places. So we find ourselves up uh, up in uh, up in sixth in this particular split here. So we're just going to make sure we get a good qualifying lap in. I think we've got three chances. You can do one qualifying run, cancel back to the pits, do another qualifying run with two flying laps. There's just about enough time for that. Get through turn one okay, so we're just going to fast forward the rest of this lap and see what it ends up being as we're heading up the back straight through the final corner. It's a little bit of a wobble I do on the final corner. 103.4, it was provisional pole position for about one second as I got overtaken by Tazar and then Metal Gear and Diego. I'm actually 1.3 tenths up at this point, so very good first sector I had there. As we're rounding up through here, I'm still marginally purple as we're heading through the second sector split. As long as I can get a good run down this back straight uh, in the slipstream of Rosmo through the final corner, come across the line. One, one, well, over one and a half tenths down, so it really just goes to show that I lost out in that final sector, so that's the straight line sector there, so obviously, who's got pole there? Metal Gear, I think he was driving the BMW M4. We're going out for our second qualifying run, up behind Tazar, let's see if we can get a nice clean turn one, get into the apex. So we had to have a second stab at the brake, but we just about get through there okay, in the slipstream of Tazar now, and we'll come across the first sector split, marginally down. Tazar obviously found himself down as well and has binned off that lap, there's just about enough time for him to get another qualifying run in, another go uh, on 100%, you know, uh, tyre life, and heading through here, it's a clean lap so far, heading up into the final corner. Braking just as the white line on the left straightens up and we managed to get around the inside of that corner nicely. There's quite a good amount of banking on the inside of uh, turn 8 there so you want to keep it fairly tight, fairly narrow which is actually pretty hard to do. You really want to carry speed but I think you're better off getting the car rotated. Heading up into the final corner we have the slipstream off the back of IMAT and we get the power down beautifully on the exit taking a little bit of a wider line in and taking a later apex. We finish three thousandths of a second slower than our qualifying time. I don't think that really would have improved us any position there. So we finish up in fourth. So this is where I can finally, you know, cross my fingers and hope for a better result. So across, uh, off the line here, we turn traction control on successfully this time. And there's a little flash of the traction and we turn it off before we have to change gear. We've got the slipstream of Tazar, we've also got the inside for turn one, so are we going to be able to defend this from Diego? And Metal Gear has made a flying start, there's going to be no real reason why he's going to fall back. Diego gets the cut back through turn one on Tazar and manages to go around the outside of turn two, gives him the inside for turn three, and I think he's just about ahead for turn four, so that's a little bit... That's a little bit unfortunate for Tazar's race. I definitely think Tazar has the pace to uh, to sort of, you know, contend with Metal Gear a bit, but he is, of course, in that M4, so it's going to be difficult down the straight. So, we now find ourselves in fourth again, which is where we qualified, and we're behind Tazar and Diego. Historically, when I've been racing Diego, I find that he's marginally slower than me, and I think that was the case still here, as we're going to come through the final corner, there was a particular a particular sort of behaviour that Diogo was, you know, Diego was showing, which really communicated to Tazar, especially, and myself eventually, uh, that he needed to be behind us. Tazar and I needed to be the pioneers and to try and just lap as cleanly as possible. Diego used second gear on the exit of turn one, and he did that throughout the entire race. I checked the replay, and I didn't also thought I thought I noticed it in the race as well I did hear some very high revs that wasn't that weren't mine on the exit of turn one and once I got very close to Diego I saw you know I could see like a jolt as he shifted gear so that would have been losing Diego a little bit of time third gear is what you want on the exit there so Tazar I think has discovered that at this point on lap two and he's trying to look and make his way past uh, as quick as possible because he does not want to lose time. Tazar is not in the business of losing time. Tazar is in the business of trying to get the race done as quickly as possible and if that means he has to overtake someone who's just using one wrong gear across the whole lap, that's what Tazar is going to try and do. So we're heading up 
into the final turn onto the exit there. We use all of that exit curb and we set a 103.7 as we're heading into the first turn. Metal Gear has gapped us a little bit, 2.2 seconds away from me as we flash ahead to lap 8. Listen to this. I can't be the only one that heard those really, really high revs in the distance. So, Diego using second gear on the exit of turn 1 is the slower way through turn 1 when you compare using second gear and third gear. And Tazar knew this, so he's looking to get his way past now, we've kind of been stuck behind him a little bit. It's very difficult to overtake at Tsukuba, as we've discussed. Getting up through into the final sector, through the final sector split. Tazar basically sends it down the inside. Diego leaves the door open, runs a little bit wide, and has just let Tazar through. I was not able to sort of follow him through, unfortunately. Heading out of the second to last corner, I've got a little bit of a pace disadvantage there. I didn't quite get the as good of an exit as Diego did. Both got the slipstream down the back straight now, and hopefully Tazar is able to drive away from Diego. But while he's, you know, while he's ahead now, he'll probably drive away eventually, but you can see he's made uh, Diego susceptible to a move at turn one. We're trying to go down the inside. I downshift to second gear to get some extra rotation and speed on the exit, but because the next corner is a left-hander, and that... Uh, that, that just means Diego is able to defend this position, so that's really unfortunate. I really wanted to follow Tazar through and try and keep with him. But now the only thing I can really hope for is that Tazar can hold Diego up a little bit, or, you know, make Diego focus on Tazar more than me, and make Diego sort of put his car in the wrong position in terms of defending a move from me. It was status quo for a long, long time, up until lap 11 I'm going to skip to, and we'll show what happens here in the exit here. I think Diego definitely changes gear there and as we're heading up into the next turn now I think we're just about close enough to try and get a move into the second to last corner so that's what we're going to do Diego has a very poor exit from turn four that just makes me sort of think to myself oh maybe I can get a move here as we duck into the slipstream heading through turn six we're really, really close, heading through turn 7, looking up the inside, but Diego kind of de really defends it well. He leaves the door open on the exit, but I run slightly deep too with Diego, and I get a large kick of oversteer on the exit. That's really put me on the back foot now, and you can see that gap has opened up to about half a second. We skip ahead to lap 13, where Tazar is defending from Diego for his life. It slows them both up, so I'm once again looking to get an opportunity to make a move on Diego for this final podium paying position. So that's what we're going to try and do here. Heading up into turn four, we get that car stopped nicely. Later apex than Diego, trying to get onto the power, but we don't quite get that power down as well as we needed to. And you can see Diego takes a much faster entry into the 90 degree right-hander, and he basically leaves me with no opportunity uh, to reply on this particular occasion. You can see he's still defense to the inside, and he doesn't actually leave any space on the inside that time, so there was going to be no opportunity for me to get a move there, even if I was close enough, and we now skip ahead to the final lap. This is the last opportunity I have to get a move done, so we're just going to have to focus on getting a very good sort of first and second sectors here, and go for that move at the final corner, because that's about the only place where you can kind of make a move stick. And you can see we're really close heading through here. We just fed the throttle, looking around the outside. We don't really want to try and overtake him yet because I don't want to give him the opportunity to re-overtake me. So we're going to be trying our best to get a very good 90-degree right-hander. And I think, unfortunately, we have not managed to do that. Diego has gapped us by three tenths. He's got the slipstream off the back of Tazar to sort of carry his speed down that straight and rounding into the second to last corner. We're trying to get as good of an exit as I possibly can and I unfortunately just wiggle the car too much and that is going to be the end of that. I managed to get stuck in fourth position. So kind of another little bit of a frustrating race but it wasn't as bad as the first one. The first one was like a demolition derby. But I managed to bring home fourth, so close to the podium, I think it was possible, but I uh, was not, unfortunately, clean enough in order to sort of get that move on Diego. So we bring home 226 points, somehow clean race as well. I think there was definitely contact, but clean race it is. But 226, not a bad result at all, and that's where we left that there. That was a little bit of a boring combination, if I'm honest, you know, the video was kind of 
a bit boring too. There's not really too much going on. You're just getting stuck behind a cork in the bottle, basically, in this race. If you get stuck behind a Super and M4, that's your race over uh, before it even really gets going, and which is exactly what happened in the first race. I went again, and thankfully there were no other cars around me that could foil uh, my attempt at trying to get a good result there. So I managed to get 226 points. You know, we'll call that a day there. Once again, apologies for the lengthy break between last video and this video, but I think we're yeah, just about back now. My voice is still struggling a little bit. I had like a major coughing fit halfway through this commentary. Oh, the power of editing that you guys didn't have to suffer through listening to that. But I've got plenty of videos lined up too from Laguna Seca manufacturers in the same week. I've got one from Sardinia Road Track A manufacturers, the final round. I've got a couple of daily race videos on the way, so plenty on the way. Do keep an eye out for it. But that's going to finish up this one today, so do hit that like button if you enjoyed and do subscribe. If you'd like to see more videos from me, do leave a comment as well. Questions, comments and constructive criticism as always, very much appreciated. But that's going to be the end of this one today, and that means that is it from me. So once again, I do thank you very much for watching. See you later.